Hi, honeys. <laughs> it's your girl, Michelle. I am on my way to the apartment. <laughs> so a week and a day after we got the keys, we had the movers come and they got all the big stuff and even some small stuff for us. Because we, you know, we figured at this point, well, let's just have them take it down for us. I mean, it's so easy for them. They put, it was the boxes, they stack them and they put them on a dolly and they just take them down the stairs. And it's so fast for them to do that as opposed to carrying one box down at a time. So it was really nice to do that. And one thing that's nice about movers, at least here and in Florida when we moved, you're paying for their time, not how much they're moving. So if you have a bunch of stuff that they can load up onto that dolly and take down for you, you're really not paying that much more because it takes three minutes for them to do that. Um, and at this particular place, you're paying for 15 minute increments. It ended up taking less time than we thought it would, which was nice. So the way it works, just in case you haven't used local movers, you, um, you pay a deposit and then they come out and they move all your stuff for you. And then you, um, you pay the remainder about as far as how much time it actually took them. That's what you pay after the fact. And, and then you can give them a tip too, which we definitely wanted to do that because they were doing all that sweating and up and down the stairs for us. <laughs> we ended up using uh, two guys in a truck and it was a five-star experience. We thought the guys were really wonderful. They were professional. They it was just great. I really liked the, the guys they sent out and they did a great job and all that. So I definitely would use two guys in a truck again. So if you're planning on moving, you might want to give them a call. And I know some people think, wow, that's excessive to pay for movers. Like why not just do it yourself? Because we're getting older, we're in our forties now, and we both have jobs that require a lot out of us. We just don't have that much energy, you know, to do that kind of stuff anymore. So we spent our first night in the new house. That was uh, Saturday night. Today is Tuesday. Um, so we just have a bunch of ticky tacky stuff at the apartment. Um, just random stuff. So that's what I'm doing today is I'm going down to pack the rest of that stuff. And then Brad will come out and load it all up in my car and his uh, SUV and we'll take them to the house. I don't know that I'm really going to be going through stuff. I think we're just at that point where we just want to get done with the move and then go through things later. So everything that we're going to go through, uh, we're going to put in the garage and then everything that has already has a spot or that we know that we want, that'll go in the house. I think I like the house more now that I'm living in it than I did before I lived in it. Like I really liked the house, but now I love the house. It's, it feels so big compared to the apartment. And the rooms, like our bedroom and the two offices aren't very big, but we don't really care about that. We wanted a nice living room. I wanted a library. Brad really wanted um, a backyard where he could have a grill and like maybe a fire pit and some chairs around it, you know, places to sit and relax and that kind of stuff. We have all of that there. So to us, that's more important. Oh, and my number one thing, I, I didn't even mention this, the kitchen. I like to cook. I wanted to have a kitchen that was big and easy to cook large meals in. I wanted to feel like if I wanted to have Thanksgiving at my house, it would be, <clears throat> I'd have enough counter space and room to be able to cook a nice big meal. And I wanted to feel like we had um, enough room for people to come over and sit down and that kind of stuff. The apartment we were in, I never wanted people to come over. It always felt very uncomfortable to me. Uh, not just having people below us, having to hear people walking around, but it just felt so packed in that there was nowhere for people to sit. I felt like the kitchen, while it was bigger than the last one, it felt like, or the one before, it still felt too small to cook big meals in. 
there was no counter space and nowhere to store things and that kind of stuff. So it just feels so nice in the new house. It's very cozy where if, if I sit on the couch and I look out the window, um, we've got the stairs, right? If I look towards the window above the front door, I see mountains. And so I can sit and watch the sunrise with coffee in my hand while sitting on the couch if I want, which is awesome. And we can also see the same view from our bedroom window. And I love that. I, Cause that was one of the big things that made me fall in love with Vegas is that, you know, every, any direction you look, you see mountains. There's mountains all around. We're in a valley and it's just so beautiful to me. I love mountains. I love the desert. I mean, I don't want to like go live outside in the desert, right? But I like the desert feel. I love cacti that kind of stuff. And so to me, the desert is where it's at. I love being here. If we ever were to leave Vegas, we would still probably move somewhere in the desert because it's just our thing. That's what we like. But I'm dreading going to this apartment. You know, I've mentioned before, I didn't feel safe there and I was just very uncomfortable. My anxiety goes up every time I even think of that place. And so I don't want to go back. I don't want to pack the rest of the stuff. I, I was tempted to even just leave it and have the apartment complex throw everything away but then I thought about it and it's like one that's really rude and two the closet that was in the office that we shared is what still has a bunch of stuff in it and that's got all of my mom's dishes their fine china that she gave me from when her and my dad got married and it's got all of my artwork and even though I've only sold a couple paintings it's like it'd be a real shame to just let all that go I just want to be done. I think everybody feels that way, right? Once you've moved, you don't want to do anything at the old place anymore. And I love the new house so much. I just want to stay there. I don't want to come back to this apartment from hell anymore. <laughs> so I'm back, obviously. <laughs> and as you can tell, it's dark out. And <clears throat> boy, that was a long day. So I packed I didn't know Brad was only expecting me to pack about half of the stuff, but I thought I just want to nail it out so I can go in there tomorrow, get my cleaning done, and be done with it, you know. Something I discovered when I got to the apartment was the electricity is turned off, which is really weird because I had told the electric company to turn off our electricity on Wednesday night or Thursday morning. And then turn on the electricity at the house on Friday night because we were moving in on Saturday. Now, the landlord had the electricity on, but I mean, put it in our name on Friday night. Well, I got there and the electricity wasn't on. And I went to get, I thought, the way I found out was I went to go get something to drink. And the smell. <laughs> Is what hit me they must have turned our electricity off um, on Sunday or Monday morning or something because it just reeks in there already in the, the fridge and the only stuff that I had in there was like cranberry juice and um, it was it orange juice and milk all that was bad so I couldn't drink it and then I did find one like thing of water that I had put in there so that's what I drank but I was there for over eight hours packing so um, I went through that pretty quick and I was so thirsty and I just got real weak and dizzy and like I just wasn't feeling good so luckily um, Brad wanted to take me to dinner and so we went we went to Chili's and um, so that was good just kind of get away from packing and stuff but he was very pleasantly surprised that I literally packed everything today. I'm back. It's now the next day. I'm on my way back over to the apartment. And this should be it. <laughs> All I'm going to do is just a quick once over kind of cleaning. And then I'm going to pack up all the stuff that we were going to donate and take that down and drop it off and then I'll go back I'll fill up my car with 
some stuff and go back home. And that should be it. It's like, I've no, it's so funny how every move, nobody realizes how much stuff they have until they move. And um, I definitely have a lot more stuff than I thought I did. And that's part of why I'm going to be really, I, when, once we started doing this move, and once I started packing, it really occurred to me how much stuff I've accumulated with all these hauls that I do and such. And it's a big part of why I'm really concentrating more on doing vlogs and maybe cooking videos and stuff like that is I just don't want to keep accumulating so much stuff. I don't really want to consume so much anymore, you know? I want my footprint to be smaller, so to speak. And that's definitely something to really think about. So I've, I still have not cooked a meal in my kitchen and we've been living there since Saturday. It's now, what, Wednesday? Which I don't really care for, you know? And um, of course now I have a lot more grocery shopping to do because we lost all that food. <laughs> Luckily Brad was able to salvage some of the things in the freezer. A lot of the meat was still frozen solid. Thank God I had a bunch of ice pack thingies in the freezer. So it kept everything cold, I think, even more than if they weren't in there. And I'm very happy to know that we still have that food. But I still have to repurchase um, salad dressing and pickles and mayonnaise and butter and that kind of stuff. That's all gone. I just got done at Target and I wanted to give you an update on my day. I woke up, I worked for a few hours and then I, um, what did I do? Oh yeah, I went to, <clears throat> I went to our old, the apartments and I did a video just to make sure that, you know, if they tried to charge us for anything that wasn't really damaged, we'd have proof kind of thing. And then I went to turn in the keys and you remember that in that video when I was talking about, um, she was saying, yes, we're closed on the 25th. And I'm like, oh, okay. Why? Is there a reason I would have known that? And she's like, cause it's Christmas. And she was talking about December and I was talking about January, that lady. So I finally met her today and she was so sweet and nice and um, it turns out she hates being there too. <laughs> and she was just supposed to be there on a temporary basis for the company that she works for and they're trying to get her to stay now that they got rid of the manager. And I feel bad because she's, she feels the same way I do. She said she doesn't feel safe. Um, she's had to call the cops multiple times on tenants that tenants that come in and are very threatening and it's just crazy so she was so sweet and I really like her she's another one of those people I keep running into these people lately she's one of those people that I feel like I could have been friends with you know and who knows maybe we'll talk again and we can be friends I don't know but I really like her <laughs> and uh, so I left there and I figured I need to get a few groceries since all of our groceries were, you know, everything in the fridge was ruined. Um, and I needed to get the heartburn medication and then I needed to get um, just a few things for organizing around the house. I didn't find everything I was looking for. Some of the stuff I'm looking for, I guess I have to just, you know, people say don't go online and buy stuff, buy it in person to help keep stores open, but they don't keep things in stock like they used to either. So it's kind of hard to do that. Um, for example, in the shower, you know, those caddies that you put, well, the way the, sh the, the thing coming out of the wall is shaped, you can't put a shower caddy on it cause it slopes down right away. And so we want one of those corner ones for in the shower that goes from the edge of the tub all the way to the ceiling and then that'll work fine but nobody carries them and the one place I found them at they were $75 which is 
I mean, I know prices are going up, but dang, they're not going up that much. I mean, the one that I had bought years ago for a different place that we lived in was $25. I mean, that's a heck of a markup. So I'm going to have to go online and, and order one that way. But we had a gift card from Target. So I thought, oh, I'll go in there and, you know, just kind of get whatever I see that, you know, we want or I want. <laughs> um, so I got some groceries and then I got um, this thing that you can put over the door. <clears throat> and another thing that we can hang on the wall to hang up you know, keys and jackets and hats and that kind of stuff. We've got this whole little setup that we're going to do. And I, when it's all done, I'm going to show you. I think that's probably easier than showing you item by item. And hopefully soon, I'll actually be filming in the new house instead of always in the car. But lately, it feels like my whole life is in the car, going from the apartment to the house and back and back and back and back. And, you know, so I'm, we're finally done with the apartment, though. On the way to Target, I had a very weird experience. So I'm driving along. It's a three-lane road, okay? <clears throat> There's a cop in two lanes, the middle lane and the one next to it, the one to the right, and they've got their lights on. And I thought, oh, okay. So I just got into the far lane, and as I got closer, I saw that they had their guns drawn on the guy in front in the car. And I'm like, I thought, you know what? <laughs> I'm getting out of here. So I don't know if this was the right thing to do or not, but the speed limit was 45. I gunned it and like flew through there. Like once I saw the guns were out, I'm like, I'm not risking getting shot. And you keep hearing about these things where shootouts happen with cops and passers-by get shot and stuff so I was like mm -mm. I looked down I was going 85 <laughs> but I didn't get shot I'm here talking to you instead <laughs> how crazy is that though right I'm so happy that everything is done now everything um, I'm just so relieved I don't have to keep going back over there and I can just relax and stay at home now and this house is my home uh, I feel safe there I'm comfortable it's wonderful and um, okay. it just feels so good to like where I live <laughs> every morning now this is Martin <laughs> he loves sitting on this cat tree Looking out the window. What are you looking at, Pookie? Hmm? What are you looking at? So here's Martin and I. We're cuddling on the couch. <laughs> he has been loving the stairs. He loves running up and down the stairs. And he likes to sit at the bottom of the stairs and meow really loud. It sounds like he's singing. I think he likes hearing his voice echo. Is that what it is, Martin? <laughs> they are loving the sun. I'm not sure why Zelda is sitting in the shade, but earlier she was laying, oops, she was laying right here earlier. <laughs> it's so cute to watch them in this house. I'd say we're nowhere near being done unpacking or organizing yet. And I've taken a few days off of shopping for the house, which is probably a good thing because it gets exhausting pretty quick. So today marks the one week mark of us being in the house. We moved in here on Saturday of last week and now it's Saturday again. And we are really enjoying it, but it's hard to get used to being here. <laughs> and what I mean by that is, it's kind of like when, when I met Brad, I was not really used to being treated very well by men. And 
it took a while to get used to being with someone that was really nice and loved me for me and didn't judge me and that kind of stuff, right? And it kind of, that's kind of how this house feels. It's like we have both always lived in such loud places. It's really hard to get used to such a quiet, tranquil place. <laughs> I mean, we were used to falling asleep, I would say, probably every night, we would hear sirens multiple times a night, um, and then we did have, I'd say about once every week or two, we'd have helicopters, you know, with the spotlight, like looking for people, and the spotlight would be kind of going through our windows and that kind of stuff. And, and then the neighbors and everything. And it's just so hard to get used to, um, such quiet and it's, it's hard to, um, get used to not having, not being on guard all the time. What do you think Zelda? Are you happy? <laughs> Are you enjoying the house? I think Zelda's loving the house. Um, Zelda's been going out on our nice balcony today, haven't you? We've been going out and exploring. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? Look at them. You're, you're silly. It just feels like a, a neighborhood in movies or something. We woke up this morning and we've got a view of the mountains outside of our bedroom window. And <laughs> so we opened up the uh, drapes and I was folding laundry on the bed and we were both looking out the window and somebody went by, they were jogging. And then a few minutes later, somebody was riding a bike out there and it was just like, this feels like a, a nice, happy neighborhood in a movie or something. <laughs> Um, and when we originally looked at the house, it was just after Christmas and we noticed that there was lights <clears throat> and decorations on every house in the neighborhood. So I think this is going to really be a fun place, uh, during Halloween and Christmas every year. I think if we want to look at Christmas lights, we can just go for a walk. We don't even have to drive anywhere. And so in that way, it kind of reminds me of, um, the, the first house that we had together, it was in that kind of neighborhood that really got into the holidays. And, and to me, that's part of what really makes a house a home because I'm so into the holidays. <laughs> I guess I'm boring her now she's going to sleep. The day that we started, okay, this is kind of, I wanted to tell you something that's kind of interesting. So as you know, it's winter and roses are not in season right now. The day that we got the keys last Friday, we did a very thorough examination of the house with the property manager. And um, just, he showed us all the ins and outs of the house and um, we wrote down anything that was wrong with the house and that kind of stuff. And there's this rose bush out front. And I had been looking at it. Okay, Marty just walked up. That's why she's upset. It's okay. So I was looking at this rose bush and it looked, I was wondering if it was dead because there was nothing growing on it. But then I thought, well, it's not in season anyway. A week later, when we had the movers here, I looked out the window and there was a bud on the bush and I thought, what? No way. Hey, stop. <laughs> so I took a picture of it this morning. It is in full bloom. It's a beautiful rose and I kind of feel like it's some kind of a sign or a symbol. That, hey, no scratching carpet. I kind of feel like it's some sort of a symbol or a sign that this is like a 
a new start or a fresh beginning or a new chapter in our lives. And um, I'm just, I'm really excited. I think that my anxiety will really go down a lot being here. And I think us having separate offices will really help um, both of us with our careers because Brad needs a lot of quiet time to think and stuff when he's working. And if I'm sitting there on the phone in the same room, it's very distracting. And then he does a bunch of conference calls. And when he's on a conference call, I can't talk on the phone. And my whole job revolves around talking on the phone to people. And so I kept having to go out into the other room to talk on the phone. But then I needed my computer to answer the questions that I was being asked. And I had no way to do that. So, yes, you can use a laptop, but it's not, it's just not quite the same as being able to work in an office and get your work done and not have to keep running out of the room every time the phone rings and, and that kind of thing. And so that's why we decided to get such a big house. It does seem pretty big for two people, but because we each need our own office, it seemed to be ideal for us. <laughs> um, it's a little bit bigger than we were planning on getting, but it just happens to be the house that we fell in love with in the neighborhood that we fell in love with. That's about it, really. We're just, um, I think we're going to go exploring soon. We want to see what parks are in the area and what kind of stuff is around here. We haven't really, we're not, I mean, we're a little familiar with this area, but not to the degree that we normally would be so I want to start figuring out those things where's the closest bookstore um, where do we want to have our PO box at that kind of stuff got to start figuring that out and I will check back in with you soon I'll let you know how it's going it's definitely nice for both of us to be able to sleep so well every night I don't feel so tired in the morning because I'm not being woken up throughout the night, which is really wonderful. This has now become the daily morning routine. <laughs> now Zelda uh, gets up on the cat tree and Marty lays in the sun rays down below. And it, it's been like this the last three or four days. <laughs> <laughs> Zelda Sally in her habitat. <laughs> wow, I love it when she does that. It's so cute. She said she does. She sounds like Gizmo, or you know. <laughs>